Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through trochanteric bursitis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash trochanteric bursitis or in the orthopedic section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Trochanteric bursitis refers to inflammation of a bursa over the greater trochanter on the outer hip. It produces pain localized to the outer hip, referred to as greater trochanteric pain syndrome. Bursi are sacs created by synovial membrane filled with a small amount of synovial fluid. They're found at bony prominences, for example at the greater trochanter in the hip, the knee, the shoulder and the elbow. They act to reduce friction between the bones and the soft tissues during movement of the joint. Bursitis refers to inflammation of a bursa, and this causes thickening of the synovial membrane and increased fluid production, causing swelling of the bursa. The inflammation can have several causes. Friction from repetitive movements, trauma to the bursa, inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, or infection referred to as septic bursitis. So let's talk about the presentation of trochanteric bursitis. The typical presentation is a middle-aged patient with gradual onset lateral hip pain over the greater trochanter on the outside of the hip. And this pain may radiate down the outer thigh. The pain is described as aching or burning and it can be worse with activity, standing after sitting for a prolonged period or trying to sit cross-legged. The pain may disrupt sleep and it can be difficult to find a comfortable lying position. On examination, there is tenderness over the greater trochanter on the outside of the hip. There's not usually any swelling unlike bursitis in other areas, for example, electronong bursitis where there can be quite a lot of swelling at the elbow joint. The NICE clinical knowledge summaries updated in 2016 suggest special tests to help establish a diagnosis. And these special tests are the Trendelenburg test, which we'll talk about in more detail, and then resisted movements, such as resisted abduction of the hip, resisted internal rotation of the hip, and resisted external rotation of the hip. Let's talk in more detail about the Trendelenburg test. And this involves asking the patient to stand one-legged on the affected leg. Normally the other side of the pelvis should remain level or tilt upward slightly. A positive Trendelenburg test is when the other side of the pelvis to the leg that the person is standing on drops down and this suggests weakness in the affected hip. Next let's talk about how to perform resisted movement. To perform resisted movements, you resist while the patient performs a movement. For example, with the patient lying supine or on their back, ask them to abduct their leg at the hip. While they do this, you apply resistance in the opposite direction to their movement. This causes the soft tissues associated with the bursa to tighten, causing pain. Pain on resisted movement supports a diagnosis of bursitis. Finally, let's talk about management. The diagnosis of trochanteric bursitis is based on the history and examination findings. Management options are rest, ice, analgesia, for example, ibuprofen or naproxen, physiotherapy, and steroid injections. Rarely, trochanteric bursitis can be caused by infection, and this may present with warmth, erythema or redness, swelling and pain over the bursa. The patient may have a fever and treatment of septic trochanteric bursitis involves antibiotics. Overall, it can take six to nine months for the patient to fully recover from trochanteric bursitis and sometimes it can take longer. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, it really helps.
Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel. There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations, and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards, and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine, and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.